Greetings, YouTube. This is Dave Croft, and welcome to my week three vlog for our 52 Qs. Uh, if you are just joining me, welcome aboard. As a recap, uh, we are riding one, at least one Q a month for the entirety uh, of the year. And so in week one, I did a, a, an, an epic hip hop cue. Week two, uh, last week, I wrote a positive cue. And so uh, that's what we're looking at today. We're gonna we're gonna talk about uh, what what the positive cue did for me and what I what I learned through it and uh, kind of how I kind of put it together a little bit. And then uh, we'll look into week three coming up, which is a light tension cue. So the positive cue for me, I really enjoy writing positive cues, but it can be really easy to kind of slide into cliche mode. And sometimes though. Sometimes kind of cliches are are the way to go, <laughs> you know. It's uh, and so uh, it, on the on the Facebook group, you know, there are a few folks who were who wrote, you know, like a, a ukulele thing, which is kind of like what I did, and they're like, oh, I just I, I kind of hate this because it sounds so corny. But man, you know, if you're if you're selling sandwiches or or if you're you know underscoring a scene in a in a, a uh, home and garden TV show, you know, a house flipping show or something like that, then, then it's, it's absolutely what's called for. And so, um, just, just remember, we're not necessarily making high art here. We're making production music, which still needs to be held to high artistic standards, but you know, it, it's okay. It's okay for, to, for your, your tune to have kind of a happy clappy ukulele thing. And, and, uh, the challenge is making it sound at least somewhat original, but I mean, there are only so many, you know, only so many ways that the ukulele is going to come across in a production music cue. So, um, I, I usually, whenever I write positive cues, it's usually kind of orchestral or, you know, piano-based and that kind of thing, even though I'm not a pianist, uh, but that's just kind of what I gravitate towards. And so, a couple of months ago, I wanted to get in on all the ukulele love that I'm that I'm hearing in production music. And so, I just, I went on Amazon and, and I bought a very well-reviewed uh, ukulele and it was like 75 bucks and it's hanging on the wall right there. It's that guy hanging on the wall. And, um, and I just, I, I got like a chord app and I just started learning the chords. I am not a guitarist. The guitar itself somewhat perplexes me. I think just coming from a, uh, a percussionist and a, and a keyboard percussionist player where everything is very kind of linear and this is the low notes and this is the high notes, the, the idea is that the, the strings and, and, and I get it, but they're, they're tuned in, in, in intervals and fourths and thirds and each one is a half step. I get that makes sense, but changing to, it's just never clicked for me. Uh, and so even, even though I, I play a little guitar, it's mostly just open string kind of things with, you know, drop D and, and a bar chord and a little bit of bass. I would definitely not consider myself a guitarist. So getting the ukulele, knowing that it was tuned different than the guitar, knowing that uh, even though some of the fingerings are somewhat similar, it, it's, it's, it sounds different. And, and, and the way it's tuned is the, the very top string is actually the highest string. And, and so, uh, it's really interesting. So I kind of threw myself into learning it over the over November and December of last year, and I really enjoyed it. Really enjoyed it. It's very very straightforward. There's only four chords. The strings are nice and far apart. So you know if you have you know fat fingers like I do, you don't have to kind of mash them into tiny parking spaces. And so I really really in, enjoyed it. I'm not playing anything really beyond the key of C. It's all very very straightforward, very simple chord progressions. And so I knew that I wanted to use it. I mean, the whole reason I bought it wasn't just, you know, I like ukulele. It was it was because I wanted to leverage that into my production music work. And so one of the things, one of the takeaways from from doing this cue was it's, it's okay if you're not a maestro on the instrument. It's okay if you are not, you know, the the Santana of ukulele, you can throw it down on, on a production track. Now, obviously it should sound good and it should be mixed well and, and there shouldn't be errors, but you're not really trying to break new ground, you know? So you're, you're just looking to put something down that sounds authentic and, 
and that sounds and has a real instrument. And I know I wanted to do that. So so here is uh, it's called Uke Thing. I actually ended up titling it Gone Fishing. So we'll take a listen to that, and then I'll break down the cue a little bit for you. So that is Gone Fishing. Had a lot of fun putting it together. Uh, to be honest, at the end of the week of last week, I, I was a little worried that I wasn't going to to, to make it for the cue for the week for that theme. I'm, I'm really trying to stick to the, the theme of each week. Uh, even though I had put together two other cues last week, I wanted to, to do this one and kind of treat it like a, a library search. So it starts off with this just really very straightforward ukulele melody that I recorded using this, this pair of Samsung mics. Uh, just making sure that's in the shot there. A pair of Samsung CO2 mics. Nothing at all fancy. Maybe a hundred bucks on Amazon or something. Um, I just know I wanted a stereo pair and I didn't do any... You know, I didn't get deep into multi-miking and pointing to the neck and pointing to the, the sound hole. Uh, I mean, that, that's cool if you're cutting a record, but, you know, we're, we're, this is, this is going to go underneath, you know, selling sandwiches or something. And so, uh, so yeah, just a very simple XY pattern. I literally, literally, and, and played it just like that. In this studio, not a pristine environment, nothing, nothing like that. A little bit of light processing, just EQ to cut the low in. A uh, little bit of light compression. Had Neutron in here, uh, just the EQs. Sure, I don't remember. I don't remember what I did with the neutron there. Uh, and then just a quick transient to make the transients pop out a little bit without the transients. Here, it just kind of rings out a, a bit. So with the transient, I just boosted the attack here and then um, brought down the sustain. Yeah, and 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 I took uh, took a couple of takes of it just so I can have something for safety uh, to go back and forth in case, you know, I biffed up a part. And you can see here, I biffed up the parts here, especially going from uh, from the uh, the F major to the, the F major to the C, or to the G rather, that was, that was a skip for me. And so that's where my little drummer brain uh, kind of, kind of <laughs> slow processor. So, uh, so that is the, uh, the, the ukulele part. 
Then the next thing I, I laid down was some some drum parts here. Very straightforward drum parts. This is Superior Drummer using the uh, their Indie Folk kit, which which I really like. Superior Drummer isn't my favorite drum library because it's 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 really amazing at what it does. It's very authentic, but that also means that sometimes you you bring some uh, some of some of the headaches of of recording live drums, and so you have to do a little bit more processing to get those. They don't sound as good out of the box. A little bit of uh, Abbey Road vintage drummer here. Just some light brush on the snare drum. Uh, could have easily have recorded that myself, uh, but I was uh, running out of time. Threw on this really quick egg. Egg shaker, that, which I took with the same mic. Literally just put down the uh, ukulele, dropped in some drum parts, and then um, and then put on this egg. This egg part. When you're writing percussion like this, I think it's super important not to overdo it. My original, you can see my original kick part here, which uh, which is which is what I wrote first before I put that. Let me uh, let me let me turn that on for you. And I had it coming out out of the top, you know, and it was like. And uh, that's what I was feeling, but it just ended up being way too busy. For these types of cues, less is always, always more. And then I layered in some, uh, so as we're kind of moving through the percussion here, layered in some snaps. Uh, two layers uh, with the stereo pair here, it's literally just doing that. Some, some very light processing, a little bit of EQ, and a compressor just to, just to smooth out any transients. And then I threw it onto my, my new favorite reverb, Mia Spaces 2, here. And then a little glockenspiel melody, because, you know, what's a happy, clappy, what's a happy, clappy tune without glockenspiel? If uke ukulele and glockenspiel are so present, or ever-present, I should say, in, um, in this type of uh, tune space. A little bit of suspended symbol that I wrote myself, that I recorded myself rather. Actually, yes. One of the things I really like doing uh, when you're writing out, so we come out of the gate with the melody. And we know that we want, with these production tracks, you know, we want usually every four bars something new happening, right? And so you can add new layers, but you can also add harmony. Just, just harmonize the melody, sprinkle in some piano to just kind of fill it out a little bit. Had some contrary motion in my, uh, in my Glock melody. So the original melody is going up, the counter harmony is kind of going down. So you have the statement, then repeat the statement with the, uh, the rhythm section. A little bit of light bass in there. And the bass is just the Native Instruments Scarby bass. Now we come up into the B section. I needed to give the listener a break from that glockenspiel melody. And then I go to uh, to the four chord here. So instead of the one chord, so it's just a four, one, five, uh, four, one, five, one, one, seven kind of idea. Uh, and that one, seven is that, that, that uh, tri not the tritone, uh, secondary dominant that sets up back to the four chord. Uh, theory, sorry, uh, and and so, but I just wanted some uh, a counter melody, and I wanted to get the uh, the glockenspiel out of the way. And so, if you have ukulele, if you have glockenspiel, if you have like stomps and claps, then you gotta bring whistles to the table. And so, it's just a couple of, a couple of layers of me whistling. Now, I didn't whistle into those because that's stereo, and I knew I was gonna layer these, and so I went ahead and just whistled into this guy. All right, a little bit of bobble there at the end, but that's okay. It's it's whistling. It, it shouldn't sound like a pristine instrument. So state the melody. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. State it again. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Little, little note variation. There's that C7 chord to set up. 
Oh, that's actually the G7. The C7 comes around. There's the, the five to the one. Now to the one seven, and that gets us back to that F, back to the four chord. And then the finally, the last new layer that I added was, which I actually saw on a Panera commercial, so I am absolutely using this as a reference, is using using accordion just to, just kind of the bellows kind of going in and out just to fill out the, the harmony a little bit. I know I didn't want a ton more rhythm. My, my piano is just playing really block chords and maybe, you know, maybe some, some rolling kind of things. But uh, this East-West accordion sounds fantastic. And it's, it's I, I wanted it to sound like a, like a Parisian cafe with a little bit of, little bit of mod wheel action, or it might be expression. Hmm, not showing up, come on for me. Hmm, that's very interesting. Oh. Okay, so yeah, I got some modulation just to just to kind of make it kind of feel like it's bellowing. There's the seven. Second time around. Again, this is this is every four bars, you know, something new needs to happen. So the first four bars, my accordion is just playing the chords. Second four bars, add that tonic at the bottom. Or the roots of the chords, I should say. All right, and, and so as we restate the A theme, we're gonna kind of break it down a little bit. Nice extended chords, uh, or extended tones on the bass. And now we're back in. So I'm kind of, kind of mixing this layer here, here in bars uh, one through eight, and this layer, this layer here, bars 26 through 33 or 34 or or whatever. And I, I experimented a lot with what I wanted my piano to do, and I even had little little counter rhythms and everything happening and I, it was just easier just for it to sit block chords you know let the melody and the ukulele be the most important things here Give them, get, let them know when to clap, end on a nice one chord. By that point, I, you know, we're two minutes, we're already hitting our target time, and I had already stated what I wanted a couple of times, so we're, we're doing okay. And so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send that up uh, anytime I see a search for, for happy, clappy, uplifting, ukulele, or acoustic-based instrumentals. I'm, I'm going to sit on this and send it up the pipe, maybe, maybe send it off to a couple of uh, libraries I have a relationship with, see if they want it. If not, then I'm going to stick it in my pocket and wait for an opportunity. But I'm really happy with that. Is it the most original piece of music ever to be written? Of course not. I, I, that's not my goal. My goal is to make something that is usable for a music supervisor who's cutting together a commercial or a, a TV show or, or something like that. So that, that that's my goal with, with this type of cue. And you might be sitting here, and this sounds like the most saccharine, boring thing ever, and you would never want to write music like that, and I can totally respect that, and that's completely okay. We just probably have different career goals, you know. Um, ultimately, ultimately, my career is making a sustainable living, making music, and, and whatever whatever that looks like. So if that means I'm making ukulele cues, or if that means that I'm making uh, cues for a horror movie, and I don't like horror movies, or, or maybe that's making cues for a show I would never, ever watch on VH1 or something. That, that's totally okay. You could still make the music, but write it, uh, submit it, and then, and then move on and realize and be comfortable in your own creative skin that this isn't, this doesn't represent necessarily who I am as an 
artist because I'm not necessarily trying to make art. All right, so there, there's there's deeper philosophy there that we I'm sure we'll get into. So that is Gone Fishing. I hope you enjoyed checking out that breakdown. What does week What does week three bring? Well, week three we're writing light tension cues. So those are the types of cues that show up in investigation crime dramas where they're trying to put a puzzle together. They're putting the clues together or a medical examiner examining, you know, uh, a corpse during an autopsy and they're, they're trying to piece it all together. Or uh, a lot of times tension, light tension cues show up in uh, other reality TV shows, cooking shows a lot, you know, when they're trying to figure out who won, you know, and they're taste testing or like Shark Tank, that type of show, competition type shows where it's not like action. They're, they're actually kind of learning their fate. And so one of the things I like about light tension cues is they're, they're very melodically driven. And so they have a, a really clear melody that, that gets repeated and we start in introducing some hybrid textures. So we're going to have some synths and that kind of thing. And, and yeah, the very slow moving harmony. So it, the chords won't be changing nearly as, as much as, as Gone Fishing. But I'm looking forward to that, looking forward to, to writing light tension. That goes hand in hand with the types of cues that I teach at Full Sail. And so if you are a Full Sail student or a, a, an alumna, alumnus, uh, then hello, man. I hope you guys are doing okay out there. But uh, we, 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 we work on that type of cue all the time. So if, you, if you've ever seen me do that in a lecture or something, then you're going, to, uh, you're going to be very familiar with that writing style. But I will be writing that this week and showing you next week what that cue looks like and breaking it down for you. So I hope that you have and have had a fantastic 2019 so far, and I hope that your week three is going well. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Peace.